Hello, today we are reviewing the Lirigo t embed CC1101. The t embed is a development board that integrates a microcontroller with several pre-connected peripheral modules. These boards are manufactured by the Chinese company Lirigo that located in Shenzhen, which specializes in research and development in the IoT industry. Right now, I have in my hands one of their many products. There are several versions of the t embed differing in the built-in modules and interfaces. My version is the most feature-packed, making it especially interesting thanks to its extensive set of modules. Let's take a closer look at what it includes and what it can do. At the heart of the board is the well-known ESP32-S3. It comes with the 16 MB of flash memory and 8 MB of PS RAM. Notably, the board does not have a built-in antenna, but it includes an IPX connector with a flexible antenna already attached. This is beneficial since even a slight antenna repositioning can significantly improve signal strength. Supported wireless standards include Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz and Bluetooth 5. Now, let's examine the board itself. The controller board has a capsule-like shape, and the CC1101 module immediately stands out. It is a low-frequency transceiver with an IPX connector for an external antenna that operates in the 300 to 928 MHz range. The board features a battery connector, though I removed the battery for better visibility. There is also a microSD card slot but its placement is not very convenient. It can be tricky to insert and remove a card with bare hands. Near the microSD card slot, there are two quick connectors. One exposes I2C interface pins and the other is for UART communication. Next to these, you will find the speaker connector with an 8 ohm 1 watt speaker, which can output sound via the 1 square S protocol. Another notable component is the NXP PN532 chip, responsible for reading and writing NFC and RFID cards. The main board also features a third IPX connector for the NFC card reading antenna, so when scanning cards, it's best to hold them close to this area. On the back of the board, there are two buttons, power and reset. The reset button is particularly useful in case of power loss or when flashing firmware, pressing it necessary to restart the device. The enclosure is transparent, and to access the internal components, you simply remove the back cover, which is held in place by strong neodymium magnets. On the cover you can find the holes for wall mounting. Now looking at the front of the device, we see an 1.9 inch display powered by an ST7789V driver with a resolution of 170 to 320 pixels. The screen is bright with vivid colors, making it perfect for displaying detailed interfaces. In the lower right corner, there is a small hole where the microphone is located. On the left side, you can see LEDs from the infrared receiver and transmitter, while on the right, there is an encoder wheel with integrated selection button. This button, in combination with the reset button, can be used to enter boot mode, which is sometimes necessary if the COM port is not detected correctly or if sometimes goes wrong during the flashing process. To enter boot mode, press and hold the encoder button, then, without releasing it, press the reset button on the back of the board. This ensures that the device is properly recognized in COM ports and can be flashed without issues. The encoder wheel is illuminated by 8 RGB LEDs controlled via the VS2812 driver, allowing to customizable colors and brightness. Additionally, there is a side button connected to GPIO 6. Now that we are covered the hardware, how can we use it? The device comes with demo firmware that simply showcases the hardware capabilities. However, in my opinion, it lacks practical utility, since it only allows you to control LEDs, navigate interface elements and admire the display's vibrant colors. It doesn't provide access to any of the advanced functionalities we discussed. For more useful applications, you can explore third-party firmware available on the manufacturer's GitHub. Many people associate this type of the device with the Flipper Zero, and indeed, they share some similarities. To unlock the embed penetration testing potential, you can install the Bruce firmware. 
you can flash it directly from your browser. Just follow the link in the description, connect a USB Type-C cable and make sure to select the correct T-Embed CC1101 version before flashing the device. What can Bruce firmware do? It allows reading, recording and transmitting sub signals. For example, I have a radio controlled relay on my table, operating by a remote control. The relay is connected to a socket, which in turn is connected to a multimeter. When I press the button of the remote, the relay closes, supplying voltage, and we capture the transmitted signal. I can save it to the SD card and later replay it to activate the relay remotely. To test the infrared transmission capabilities, we navigate to infrared menu in Bruce and select ER read mode. This mode listens for incoming infrared signals. For demonstration, I use my phone ER transmitter to simulate a Toshiba remote control. Pressing a button on the virtual remote, TMBIT successfully captures the infrared signal as a hex code, which we can save for later use. To replay the saved signal, I go to the Bruce ER folder, select the recorded command and transmit it successfully, replicating the original remote's function. Now let's test NFC cloning. I have an original key and the blank key. Holding the blank key against the reader does nothing, the door remains locked. But when I use the original key, the door unlocks. To clone the key, I first read the original using the read tag function. Once scanned, I select clone UID the write the copied data onto blank key. Now using the cloned key, the door opens successfully. That's just one of many things that little device can do. If you want to purchase one, please use the link in the description. For custom firmware development, you can use different environments like Arduino IDE, ESP EDF or Platform.io extension for Visual Studio Code. The manufacturer's GitHub repository provides example for all built-in modules, allowing you to create firmware tailored to your needs. You can install M5 Launcher, which let you load different firmwares from an SD card. Installing it, it is simple as flashing Bruce. Just follow the alternative link in the description. There are many other potential use cases for this device, including network administration. The fact that everything is enclosed in a ready-made case without needing additional modification is a huge plus. However, the lack of extra GPIO pins may be a downside for some users. In my opinion, the biggest advantage of the T embed is the opportunity to unleash your creativity. You can write your own code to make the device perform exactly the tasks you need. Let me know in the comments how you would use this device. This was Arthur from Hobby Support channel. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel and see you soon in a new video.